All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more NEL. This is game number two for October 17th that I'm going to be casting. Probably going to be the last game, I think. Uh, it's only about 12.30. I can cast a couple more. Uh, but uh, the last game that we just had was Ten fairly uh, fairly intense. Go. I really enjoyed it. And I'm actually going to switch overlays right now because uh, we've already seconds. done the plugging. And voila. All right, and to start things off with, Dyer's we are pick. going to have the Naga Siren picked up. I uh, imagine this is support. Um, interesting, uh, usually I see Dyer getting second pick, um, or Radiant getting second pick because uh, first pick's Radiant. always... Never mind, I'm not even going to go into that. Uh, Naga Siren going to be picked up first by the Dyer as well as the Razor, so it's going to be nice to have, uh, you know, I love this support <laughs> core pickup in the beginning. Uh, Radiant is going to go a little bit different strategy, um, pick up the Nature's Prophet as well as the... Uh, Troll Warlord. Um, Troll didn't really turn out to be all that successful last game. Uh, Razor obviously was a massive Radiant success, uh, but we're going to see how things turn out this time around. Uh, in terms of bands, pretty typical OD, Visage, uh, Baden, Elder Titan, Darkseer, and Bat Rider. Those are very, very, those are the six probably most consistent whenever I cast any L. Uh, Jarcopter are going to be banned out fourth for the Radiant, so that's a little bit different. I usually don't see that a whole lot. Uh, but he's pretty strong, Ten to be completely to fair. Five seconds. <sighs> Dyer's pick. Lifestealer. Radiance pick. Weaver was the last ban out from the Dyer, uh, moving into the second pick phase, and I'm just going to wait for Dyer's the other two to go through here. <sighs> Thanks guys for tuning in again. Uh, this is a NEL game that I am casting, this is ticketed. Um, the way that works, for those of you guys that don't know, it doesn't mean that you Radiance automatically pick. get free items. Um, double kills, triple kills, stuff like that. You'll get, uh, you'll end up getting some pickups. Uh, only if you have bought the 4 or $5 ticket. Dire I can't remember when I bought it. I think it was 5 bucks. Um, so, if you haven't picked up a ticket, they are only $5 in the Dota TV store. Or Dota 2 client, whatever you want to call it. Um, 50% of the prize Radiance pool is going to end up going to the play, uh, 50% of the prize pool. Sorry. 50% of the ticket price goes into the prize pool, supports all these players, keeps this fantastic league alive. Um, this is only season one. I cannot wait to see more seasons, even if I'm not casting it. It's going to yeah. be awesome. In terms of the rest of the draft, it is finishing up really, really Radiant quickly. Spirit. We're going to see Life Stealer, Storm Spirit, and Lena up on the Dire, as well as Venture Spirit, Death Prophet, and Undying up on the Radiant. And I'm just going to wait for the game to get right into it here. I'm just going to step away for a quick second and I'll be right back. Just going to grab a drink. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. All right, looks like I'm just back in time. Perfect. Ugh. Okay, so going through the lineups really quickly here. As actually nobody's really picked up their you. heroes. I'm not quite sure. Excuse me, I'm not quite sure what is... Uh, Going on. Anyway, I'll go over the Dire first because they have the most people already picked up. We're going to have Annihilate up on the Strong Spirit last game, if you forget. He was actually playing the Shadow Fiend. Um, looks like he's not going to be going into that mid roll, though. Looks like he may be going into a farming Storm Spirit bottle first. That's odd. Anyway, uh, Chairman of the Bad Boys board is going to be playing that Razor. Looks like he's actually going mid lane uh, with a heavy stats build. Uh, we're going to see Life Stealer played by ANA. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Radiant needs a minute. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Anyway, Nega Siren going to be picked up by Duza. Uh, Duzi. And, uh, Dreamled is going to be playing battle. that, uh, Lena. Up on the Radiant, we're going to see Lucas 
played by the uh, or playing the Troll Warlord. Uh, Death Prophet going to be picked up by uh, Tyler Cho. Uh, and showing off his Instagram. Um, live going to be playing the Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Ninja Prophet going to be played by IX Mike. And uh, Pendego is going to be playing that Undying. I believe last game he also played a support, but I cannot remember right now. Actually, I want to see. I don't get to see, apparently. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to really worry about that, as there is a smoke. Um, smoke hang looks like it's going to be picked up by the, uh, trying to be executed by the two supports here. They are going to go in there, they're going to drop the entanglement on the Death Prophet. Is this going to be first blood? They're not going to be able to do a whole lot, though. Wow, that was really, really late, light check array. I don't really agree with that, with that a whole lot. And I'm going to fix this. I need to create another scene for that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, actually looks like Annihilate not accomplishing a whole lot. I don't even think he went to lane. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. They're not really uh, being able to accomplish anything right now. And Nature's Prophet just dealing a lot of harassment. This is a really big win, it looks like, for the uh, for the Radiant early on. And uh, Vengeful Spirit's going to be able to deal a fair amount of harassment here with that haste room. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the, uh, what the Dyer's doing. Actually, it's like... Stone Spirit's jungling? I I really don't like this at all. Uh, but I guess it's a thing that's happening, so I need to accept it. <coughs> Looking at who's getting that early advantage, um, that also needed early advantage, actually, am I gonna... Yes, I will. Um, the uh, Troll Warlord as well as the Life Stealer, we actually saw this identical matchup. Um, and they are nearly neck and neck in terms of last hits. There's an open wound's going to be thrown up by Ix Mike. There's the entangle. That is going to stop the TP temporarily. I don't know if Ix Mike fully knew that. Maybe he could have TP'd out, and he actually started it was safe enough to uh, stay in lane there. If the Lena had come over, you can't teleport. Ah, I thought that you could cast your spell. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I guess I've never actually had this matchup myself playing uh, playing the hero, but he is going to be in a little bit more trouble here. Giant there is, is another entangle being thrown attack. out. The open wounds is not going to be there in time. Dyer's bottom tower is under siege. And they now have an entire tri lane dedicated to absolutely no defense at this point on the Radiant, which I really don't think is all that um, productive. They could probably be maybe pulling or stacking, unless they're trying to go for a really early tower. Uh, that would be the only thing that I can think of here. As they're uh, on the dire side, they're actually going for an incredibly early tower here as well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Up in the top lane. But you probably already knew that. Dyer's bottom tower is and yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to take this down fairly easily unless they, uh, unless they send some TP support or something. Uh, Ix Mike doing what he can here. Dyer's he almost got in range for open siege. wounds. But uh, it looks like, yep, there it goes down. It's Dyer's not going to get last hit by any particular destroyed. hero, which is not the best situation. However, uh, if they continue to push this, this is a fair advantage. I mean, if you look at it right now, it's 1,200 gold and about uh, 1,200 experience, and that's probably going to jump up. Yeah, there's 1,700 gold right now in Dyer's favor of the Radiant already. Well, only four minutes. And an island needs to be pretty Dyer's careful here. It's a fair amount of nuke pitch, and they're going to mess with the Whirling Axes, so that probably means he's safe for this point. However, uh, with the siege creep as well as one range creep, they're going to be dealing a fair amount of damage. There's some stuns thrown out from the Vengeful Spirit, as well as a couple of slows. That's going to be just fine. Undying picking that up using the DK as well as just getting a couple last hits, or a couple auto attacks. 
And Dara's gonna try to fortify this out. Rage's gonna come by trying to uh, surprise them here. The Static Link not stealing a whole lot of damage. And I feel like Radiant could maybe stay. Uh, actually, with the uh, Negastron, they may want to start to back off a little bit. And no, let's say they still want to be aggressive. They're actually going to throw the stone out on the Razor. There is the uh, Entangle, and this Venture uh, Spirit's actually going to end up going down with the Lina throwing out the Dragon Slave. Troll Warlord picking up his phase boots. If we take a quick look at 5 minute item progression, uh, not a whole lot. Death Prophet has her bottle boots. The, uh, actually, all five heroes on the dot on the Radiant have their at least brown boots. Tower has and Lena's denied. already denied the tier 2, so they obviously have a pretty fair advantage. And phase boots already finished up with the Death Prophet. In terms of the dire side, what are they looking at? As uh, actually, Deuce is going to throw the Entango, but not a whole lot's gonna get accomplished there. Um, Stone Spirit has bottle boots. Razor has bottle boots with a lot of uh, stat items. And uh, Life Stealer has face boots. And uh, Lena has boots. So not a whole lot actually up on that dire side. I think not. And Storm Spirit's incredibly low here in the jungle. And we take a look at the uh, warding at the 6 minute mark, uh, it's not actually that bad. This ward is about to expire from the Radiant, the Dire side does have that defensive rune ward uh, just to help out their top lane. And uh, they should have, I thought there was some more wards, uh, Ventral Spirit has some. And uh, actually Ix Mike on the Nature's Prophet, I don't really see as a whole lot anymore, but he's actually going for a mechanism early game. You just don't see that on Nature's Prophet. Death Prophet going fairly low, but I think she's going to be just fine, and she actually has her bottle coming back out to where she was crowing, and uh, this Razor may be able to get a little bit accomplished here. I don't think he's going to be able to get a kill on the Vengeful Spirit, but he's definitely going to be able to scatter out, and uh, Ninja Prophet needs to be careful. He's trying to steal some creeps, but he should be very careful trying to uh, do that up against the sign with Entangle and the Lena Stun. And they're going to use open wounds and uh, throw a, fa a fair amount up on the Undying. So far he's not able to go down, and Nega Siren almost goes down. She may actually go down to... Nope, she's going to be just fine up against the Tombstone uh, minions there. They're going to throw it a Decay, and it looks like there was just a little bit back and forth there. Lena actually killed the Eventual Spirit. I'm not, I don't know how I missed that, but that was a thing. Exorcism and the Crypt Swarm is thrown out onto uh, onto that Razor, and this is where uh, Death Prophet's not overly powerful because of those uh, those spirits not being all that reliable. Um, there's going to be a fair amount of damage thrown out by the Nature's Prophet Ultimate. However, I think uh, Annihilate is going to go down. He's going to go down, but Annihilate is going to be able to uh, pick him up. And he is going to actually be able to take out the Death Prophet at the same time. I think that we're going to see this Undying go down. Not quite yet. And wow, there is the Undying getting a double kill there. Annihilate getting a double kill as well. Um, that was a fair amount going down there, actually. And looks like Annihilate's not quite done yet. He's going to be able to take out the uh, Undying here up on the Strong Spirit, I believe. Hopefully. Um, Mr. Prophet is going to buy back and he's going to TP there. And Razor is actually going to get spotted up by all three members here. Undying is barely going to go down. Double whirling axes as well as the Crypt Swarm. Razor is going to go down. I thought that should be ticketed, but nobody is getting items, so I'm not quite sure. Troll Roller picking up the Vladimir's strong. offering, and the mechanism is ready for IX Mike, and it looks like they're gonna just try to take Rashawn at this point. <laughs> Man, this should be pretty uncontested to be honest. I think that they're gonna be able to take it out just fine. Lena thinks that she knows what's going on. She's gonna dragon slave. They're gonna spot this out. And they're actually gonna be able to take it. 
Dyer takes it. So they're going to get a thousand gold. So that's going to buff them up fairly well. Um, and experience is actually dipping into the favor of the Dyer at this point. I don't think this game is ticketed. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Ix Mike's in the game. He probably could have ticketed it. Uh, but I don't see anybody getting any items. So, sorry about that for those of you that may have potentially got items. Uh, I'm not quite Dyer's sure why, tower is under attack. why they wouldn't ticket it. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, mechanism picked up for uh, Ninja Dyer's Prophet. Dyer's top tower is being attacked. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And it looks like they're going to instantly TP to try to defend this mid tower, mid T1. Attacked. They are not going to drop the um, Fortify though. Radiance bottom tower is under siege. Now I guess I'm picking up the urn, so that's going to be fairly good. Um, there hasn't been a, a, a significant number of kills, but it's it's going to be a fair amount of regen for free. And we're about to see a lot of activity here. There's a fair amount of TPs coming from the dire side. They really want to try to defend this. They're going to be pretty aggressive here on the life dealer, and there's actually going to be an ultimate thrown out by um, by the. Death Prophet. There's a stun from Lena that's going to slow them down a fair amount. Blaze Dealer just barely dodging the ultimate from Nature's Prophet. And uh, they're going to try to get away here. The Sprout is thrown out from the Nature's Prophet as well. And they're going to be able to kill out the Life Dealer. But all they lost so far is the Life Dealer. They may actually lose their tier 2. They're going to lose their tier 2. Uh, so that's definitely unfortunate for them. And they're going to le leave a little present of a incredibly aggressive ward. I really like this choice. Drum picked up on the Nature Prophet after er, up on the Death Prophet and Face Boots up on the Razor uh, when it's all said and done. And if you take a look at the advantage, it was sitting at 1200 experience in favor of the Dyer, however nearly 7500 gold in favor of the Radiant. So that's that's a clear Dyer's advantage for the uh, for the Radiant there for sure. And that certainly stands to show just in the towers itself. I mean, 6 to what is now going to be 0 outer tier towers. And I wouldn't be surprised yet we're going to see a TP reaction here for that tier 1. Stones are just trying to jungle, it looks like, still. Age is going to be taken away from that Death Prophet in about three minutes here. So we may see them be a little bit more aggressive in about the next minute or so. Or maybe just two minutes just to you know get the full use out of it. Uh, of course after this next patch, uh, if you don't use it, when you do lose it, your uh, regen for the you know five seconds following up to full health, uh, which is a fairly nice buff to it there. And uh, Highlight is going to be able to try to take out my Mike right away. They're going to be able to pop the mechanism as well as the Nature Prophet Ultimate. He's going to go down in the end. However, Negus Iron is going to go down as a result. And Annihilate is going to go down on that Strong Spirit as well. The uh, Aegis is going to pop. Razor is going to go down. And 9 to 5, we may see the first uh, tier 3 to go down. Double kill on the. Death Prophet, and that's massive. She's going to end up picking up a Yule Scepter from this, and they could potentially look at trying to get a little bit more. She's going to Yule's herself out of that, uh, out of the open wounds. And Nature's Prophet, after he goes down, he's going to be able to be right back to his level TP, of course. And he's also going to have Mechanism to make sure that his entire team is up for health. There we go. And the Tango was dropped down on the uh, Dying, and with the Nakes Bomb, they're going to be able to do a fair amount of damage, as well as the Razor kind of surprising them. Both on Dying and Troll World are both going to go down. Lean's going to go down as a result of that, but Ike's Mike on the Agent Prophet going down as well. And it looks like they're actually going to be able to get the Vengeance Spirit. That was a 4 for a couple trade, and that's actually going to be a team wipe. After the Yules wears off, I don't think she's going to be able to avoid that there. That was a full team wipe, 5 man for just uh, Lena in the end of the day, because they way overextended. They got the tier 3. I don't think it was denied. No, they should probably get the last hit. But still, full team wipe, but not worth it. 
and they actually lost the Aegis, so that was like a 6 for 1. Definitely not worth it. Ice Mike gonna throw out the ult just to try to help push out some of the lanes. Fair amount of damage dealt there as well. So it's like I'm dying from a lot of trouble here. He's going to be caught by the disable from the Stone Spear, as well as with the Static Link and the Plasma Field. He is going to actually survive throughout all of that. Drop down another Decay. He's going to live on the edge with 8 HP. He's actually going to go down to the Vengeance Spirit Stun. Uh, due to that Tier 1 still being up, he's going to take a little bit of harassment from that as well. There's the Lena stun on only hitting Treants, unfortunately. Radiance bottom tower is and under uh, siege. they're really going for this. The Yule Scepter is going to be dropped down. Uh, Death Prophet. Destroyed. There's also the, uh, I want to call it a Tango, but the Sprout trapping him in there. And with the Crypt Swarm, as well as a couple more auto attacks, they're going to be able to kill him off. No Radiance problem. Top Easy tower mode. Is being attacked. Why am I getting a call during a cast? Can't even handle that because we're going to see the open wounds as well as Vortex, that's what it was. And the Rage is going to be thrown out there to help him from any potential magic damage. There's the extra damage from the armlet as well. And we may see a swap actually from the Lice Dealer to try to save up the Troll Warlord. Not going to happen. We're going to see a stun on the Lice Dealer, but he's going to get away. <sighs> so, in terms of item progressions, because it's been a while, looks like Troll Warlord's going for an early BKB. Um, Fetch Spirit has a Vitality Booster, so she's clearly going to be going for that Aghanim Scepter. Uh, Necronomicon picked up by Ix Mike up on that Aegis Prophet. Uh, Undying looked like he's maybe going to go for a four staff. I'm not quite sure. Storm Spirit really close to that BKB. Viper, uh, or sorry, Razor does have the drum. I believe you had that last time though. And Light Shield has a Hyperstone since last we looked, so he's clearly going to be going for that AC. At least that's what it looks like. And if we take a look actually at the wording. Um, in terms of like vision, Radiant has a fair amount, but not a whole lot, uh, besides this one ward over here. Uh, and if you take a look at the Dire, they have pretty much their entire side. Uh, so I guess it's pretty even in terms of vision as well. And in terms of gold, 7,500 in favor of the uh, Radiant, and about 3,800 in favor of the Dire for experience. I mean, Radiant's just trying to do a little bit better there with their warding, as, uh, did I just do that right? Death Prophet Radiant's picks up a Ethereal attack. Blade. And they're gonna look like they're storming down. Stone Spirit, Light Stealer, and Mega Siren are all there. They're gonna be able to just 3 and push this without a problem, I think. Lita may be getting caught out here. I expect up on the Nature's Prophet. Throw up a little bit, but uh, she's gonna go in the opposite direction, Radiant's actually. Middle tower is under attack. And Radiant's actually having two of their towers pushed at the same tower time. Has fallen. Uh, so that's Obviously, you know, not what they're really looking for. Really, really Radiant aggressive ward placement right there with the observer from the next iron. BKB picked up by the Storm Spirit. So if Radiant's not careful, they could end up getting uh, trounced here. There is an Iron song, and they may look to actually start that off. The Lifestealer and um, the Storm Spirit are going to be able to jump in there. There's a song going to be able to be dropped, which is going to tell everybody to cool the fuck out. We're going to take out the Tombstone before they really start anything. And maybe that's all that was for. However, the Razor's going to go down. The Light Stealer's almost dead as well. Lena's just getting absolutely melted. Uh, Razor's going to end up buying back. The Light Stealer's going to be losing a lot of his health here. He's not going to be able to take out the Troll Warlord. He's going to actually end up buying back here. The Troll Warlord is so close to death. He's not going to actually go down. I think we may see a GG there. The Troll Spirit goes down. He's going to buy back. I X Mike looks like he may be trying to get in the way here, but I'm not sure if he's going to be uh, able to. Strong Spirit, after the buyback, is going to be able to take out the Troll Warlord as revenge. Crypt Storm doing a fair amount of damage. Clear <coughs> Prophet and the Vengeance Spirit going down. Pandego on that. Undying also going down. Anna uh, on the Lice are getting a double kill. And he is going to be able to TP out of there just fine. The uh, Death Prophet, that is. So they did take down the other Rax. That's now two racks down to the bot lane, but I don't really know if that was quite worth it.
And I have no idea why my stream is frozen. Why did I just drop a bunch of frames? I'm not quite sure what's going on. In the meantime, I'm trying to figure that out. Rashad is going to actually go down to the dire side. And I'm going to see. I don't know what's going on here. sure why I'm dropping a random amount of frames. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream and I'm just gonna restart it here. Dyer's middle tower is being attacked. In the meantime, for Dota TV, uh, looks like they are still trying to push in uh, the tier 3 here. I'm not sure what's going on, but anyway. Uh, Troll Warlord is almost going to go down, he's going to pop this BKB, but it's not basically going to be wasted. He's just going to go down before the Storm Spear in return. I'm not dropping any frames now, glorious. I'm not quite sure how long I was dropping frames for, that's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, streams back up. Storm Spear's going to be very, very aggressive there, up on the, uh... Adventure Spirit. There's the Tango drop down on Defra, and she's going to go to a fifth ethereal form to just be a little bit more safe. Ix Mike is going to be able to heal quite a lot from that urn charge actually, and it looks like now they're just kind of on a full on retreat at this point. They're going to drop down the aggressive observer, uh, observer ward. I really like when they do this. I guess I'm going to be able to drop down her nuke. That's going to be a kill up on the Adventure Spirit though. Razor Spirit will last around that one. It's going to try to take out. Um, this Nagar Siren, but they're not even going to get the chance to. There's the song dropping down. Lena did actually ult on Digital Prophet yet again. Uh, Death Prophet does go into Ethereal form, and she's going to go down to the Razor Plasma Field. Undying looks like he's going to get away just fine, but that was pretty big throws, in my opinion. Um, definitely not what the Radiant was looking for. And actually, right now, it looks like it's a 12,000 experience lead. Gold almost going in the favor of the Dire since the very beginning of the game, and that's really just due to the amount of towers it's down. If they were even on towers, honestly, they would... Dire would probably be in an inch at this point. I'm not quite sure what happened to my stream, sorry about the quality. Um, I, I usually don't drop frames like that, that was definitely weird. Uh, Razor is going to be able to spot out, uh, so I think he should back off there. I don't really know what the Mental Spirit is going to accomplish. Lace to the picking up AC. This is massive. This is going to be massive for this next upcoming team fight. Uh, and Lena knows it, picking up um, enough smokes to sell the miners at this point. Um, if we take a look at items, uh, Stroll Spirit looks like he's going for a hex, but doesn't quite have it quite yet. Here's some other items, there's not a whole lot of to talk about, especially due to the fact that, um, actually, Stone Spirit is actually getting melted by this Troll Warlord. There's the exorcism thrown out by the Death Prophet, and there's just tearing through. Troll Warlord actually going to get a double kill now on the Lich Dealer as well. Negasaren being pretty annoying, but there is a mechanism that did actually pop already. So I expect maybe looking to throw out that Necronomicon, unless there's a level 2 coming Dyer's on the Courier. There's a level 2 on the Courier. Dave, what are you talking about? And... Uh-oh. I am lagging. Oh god. That's the red message of death. This is probably the worst time to lag. <laughs> oh my god. I'm fully gonna DC. I'm gonna just try to reconnect here. I only dropped like 50 frames there, so I'm not quite sure what the problem was. But I bet you're gonna come back and it's gonna be GG. So uh, that's always exciting. And look at that. Uh, looks like Razor went down um, for the Troll Warlord. And uh, actually, I can, I can look at uh, 
Um. Buy back, buy back, buy back. And it looks like nobody actually bought back. <laughs> uh, this Lystra looks like he's getting absolutely demolished, and he's actually going to go down. That's two cores down. There's a full rack, so it looks like they did actually lose the tier 3 as well as the rack. Sorry for the people that are watching on the stream. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I've literally only dropped 50 frames since that weird glitch in x -Blit. But here's the Mega Creeps. They're getting racks. They're getting absolutely decimated right here. Right there. This is where the magic happens. Stone Spirit's gonna pop in, but he had absolutely nothing. He didn't even have a... He had, I don't know what's going on. He's gonna buy back, but I don't think he's gonna do anything. Um, Death Prophet is gonna actually pick up a Necronomicon level 2. Which is always hilarious. And he's Stone Spirit just bought back and died. Uh, I'm not quite sure what was going on right there. Moon's gonna throw up the uh, ultimate. However, <laughs> Death Prophet instantly heals from her ultimate. And uh, that GG is not even going to be contested. So, there you have it. That was game number two of NEL for the evening. Uh, if there's one more, I may cast one more. I kind of have the I kind of have the NEL bug at this point. Uh, I may want to cast uh, another one before I uh, call tonight. It's about one o'clock in the morning my time, but that's fine. Who needs work? No work tomorrow. No work. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in for game number two on October 17th of the NEL. I may cast one more, so you may see another one go up on my channel. Um, but uh, that's gonna wrap it up for game number two. Thanks, guys, for watching.